Sunday on ITV. Our action movie in 20 minutes is the story of a young boy with a burning desire to make it big in ice hockey, little realising the challenge he's taken on. Rob Lowe stars as Youngblood at 10 o'clock. And that's right after the news update and weather. Good evening. This is the news from ITN. Tonight's headlines. As British troops celebrate Christmas in Bosnia, their UN commander says Western military intervention would cost more lives. The mother of a six-month-old baby dies when a car crashes into a group of Christmas party girls. The royal family gather for Christmas without the Princess of Wales. The Queen talks of her sombre year. And some Christmas cheer for the homeless as volunteers hand out food and drink to the needy. The United Nations commander in the former Yugoslavia has warned the West against stepping up military action in Bosnia. Lieutenant General Satish Nambiar said the enforcement of a no-fly zone over the region would endanger his forces. He said it would lead to the loss of more lives and to the continuation of the conflict. In Bosnia today, British troops were celebrating Christmas. Traditions die hard in the British Army. Wherever soldiers are at Christmas, they can expect early morning tea with a little something extra served by their officers. Merry Christmas! Most of the warriors stayed under canvas while a locally agreed ceasefire between rival armies around the British base was being observed. Instead, it was a day thinking of families far away. Even Father Christmas took advantage of a free phone call home to at least hear about the celebrations. We miss it an awful lot. So it just grows, do a job, and it's part of our job to have to grin and bear it. We lift up before God this country and ask for his... Still at the back of everyone's mind is the war here and what role troops might be asked to perform in the coming weeks and months. Lieutenant Colonel Bob Stewart of the Cheshires and his fellow officers helped serve Christmas lunch. This was a day for ordinary soldiers to relax. And other outposts of Operation Grapple sat down too. The Remi had lunch in their large and drafty workshop. But the warriors did have one important task to perform, escorting a special delivery of food and presents to an orphanage 20 miles away. It was all much appreciated. Some of this aid comes not from agencies, but from the soldiers themselves. Here they're made welcome, and winning the hearts and minds of local people is all part of their job. Without this food, these children aren't in danger of starvation, but this gesture by British soldiers will at least make it a happier Christmas. Jim Buchanan, ITN, Bosnia. The families of British soldiers in Bosnia have been keeping up their spirits with the support of friends and relatives. Anya Sitharam spent Christmas Day with the family of Lance Corporal John Coogans, whom we saw in that last report. Back home in Northamptonshire, Karen Coogans is relieved to see her husband safe and well. The UN mission in Bosnia has meant he's not with Karen and his family at Christmas for the first time in five years. But compared to other service wives, she says she's lucky. Come on. I'm quite upset because I need to be away for Christmas, but as I said, this is first year, so... I can't really complain about it, and I mean he's doing a worthwhile job, so it's what he gets paid to do as well, so we can't really complain, and um, the army's very supportive, they, if we need to go anywhere, they provide us with transport, and they're very helpful if we have any problems at all. When her husband was sent to Bosnia, Karen had the support of army wives in Germany, now at Christmas without him, she has the support of family and friends. But it's only a month before she'll see him. He's on leave at the end of January. Christmas joy! I'm ITN, Northamptonshire. A 21-year-old mother was killed early this morning in Bristol when a car smashed into her as she stood waiting for a taxi. Nine other people were injured in the accident, three of them seriously. The driver who wasn't hurt was arrested after failing a breath test. Flowers mark the spot on a Bristol road where a car ploughed into a group of young people at celebrating Christmas. Tonight at their home, Sarah Manel's parents were still coming to terms with the death of their daughter. Sarah's six-month-old son, Bradley, is too young to understand that his mother is never coming home. It's not something his grandparents will relish explaining to him. Christmas for the Manels will 
will never be the same again. Yeah. Every Christmas morning we should be thinking of her. Some idiots I have to go to drink too much and drive. The tragedy happened just before one o'clock this morning as a group of about 30 young people waited for taxis to take them home from the disco. And the car seemed to be out of control and uh, it was pretty obvious that it was going to go into something. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to go around the bend. And it just milled into us and people got thrown um, all over the place. And then the car crashed on the other side of the, on the, other side of the road. The 24-year-old local man was arrested at the scene. Police later confirmed he'd been drinking. He's now being questioned in connection with causing death by dangerous driving. A man has been charged with the murder of a 99-year-old widow in a residential home in Cornwall. Sarah Burke was attacked in Red Roof last Sunday and died two days later. The man who's 21 will appear in court tomorrow. In her Christmas message, the Queen has spoken of her sombre year. And she said it was the sympathy and understanding the royal family had received that had helped them through their difficult days. Neither the Princess of Wales nor the Duchess of York went to today's Christmas service at Sandringham. Affection from well-wishers draws a smile from the Queen at Sandringham. The Christmas morning service, traditionally a family affair, this year attended by the newest royal couple. But for the first time, the Princess of Wales was absent, parted from Prince William and Prince Harry, but present in the royal's prayers. Bless you beseech thee, Elizabeth the Queen Mother, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, the Princess of Wales, and all the royal family. A family that's been through a sombre year, observed the Queen in her Christmas message. Like many other families, we have lived through some difficult days this year. The prayers, understanding and sympathy given to us by so many of you, in good times and bad, have lent us great support and encouragement. The message from Sandringham was more one of hope for a better year to come than a look back at an Annus Horribilis. 1993 will certainly bring new challenges. But let us resolve to meet it with fresh hope in our hearts. There is no magic formula that will transform sorrow into happiness, intolerance into compassion, or war into peace. But inspiration can change human behaviour. 75 miles away, the Princess of Wales spent the day behind closed doors on the Altrop estate, where she will be joined by her sons for Boxing Day. The Archbishop of Canterbury has offered an olive branch to people who are against the ordination of women. His Christmas sermon promised that the Church of England would remain a home to all, but he also warned of an increasingly materialistic society. As a nation, there are worrying signs that we are becoming a people ready to scoff, eager to knock authority, whether it deserves it or not. Our British reputation for ribbing ourselves is in danger of degenerating into an uncharacteristic meanness of spirit. And the Pope has called for an end to conflict around the world during his traditional Christmas Day message from the Vatican. He strongly condemned the fighting in Bosnia, saying the Bosnian people were suffering as hostages of programmed and inhuman violence. And he warned that a climate of hate and hostility in the Middle East was threatening to undermine moves towards peace.